Hello and welcome to the Redka Rewind. We are joined by Redka Core promoter Jamie Swills. Called back for the second week in a row. Must be doing all right. Yeah, very well. YouTube's got some good views. Is that you watching it all over again and again and again? Yeah, sure. That every one of my friends, whenever I see him, get interviewed by a celebrity. Who? <laughs> so the Bears forty-eight, the Gladiators forty-one. A tougher meeting than most predicted. But the Bears got over the line the end in a rain-affected contest. I know you don't like giving Mr. Jonathan any praise, but he did a good job tonight. I give my brother plenty of praise, thank you. He's uh, he's had um, two weeks of uh, really, really earning his money for two very different reasons, keeping the dust down last week and uh, uh, trying to scrape water off it this week. Um, we just had you know, any more water than we had on it tonight. Uh, we would have lost that meeting. Um, we, we'd actually got a fresh delivery of shale today uh, and put more shale on so that probably helps absorb the water but equally that's why the track got so heavy later on as well but early on until about heat 8, eight 9 there's some good racing there you think? I'm, I'm maybe getting spoiled here um, <laughs> there was some close racing um, I don't think there was many passes really it wasn't a, it wasn't a red car classic no it wasn't not like last week Connor Coles though there was that one pass that comes to mind he earned that point, didn't he? Yeah, it was that on Richie, yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah, once Richie passed him, because Connor looked a little bit uncomfortable and, and Richie got past him, um, I think we all sort of looked away from that when we thought that was um, a done deal. And then a lap later, he, uh, it wasn't just a snatch and grab either. He, he took a full lap to get past him and sat it on the outside of Richie to get around him. It was a really good one. Right, as always, we will go through the 1-7, to seven, interject halfway through to get... The word from the Plymouth camp with Mark Phillips. But we'll start off with Danny King. First two questions. Danny King got eight. He won't be happy with that. Is he okay, first of all? Yeah, yeah. He's just uh, banged his wrist a little bit on the way down. Um, you know, that that was the symptoms of the track getting as heavy as it did. He uh, he got pushed a little bit wiser than he wanted to. There was, at that point, it was almost like a wall of dirt. Um, once he got his wheels in it, he couldn't get out of it and... It was just get off the bike before he hit the fence, really. Um, he, he did well to get off as lightly as he did because he was going at some speed at the time. But, yeah, I think he's just banged his wrist a little bit. So going on that Heat 13 quickly, that was a way back in the match for the Gladiators. But no blame can be attached to Danny because he couldn't have got out from under the fence and the race couldn't have been awarded at that point. Uh, he was winded as well. So, um, like, if me and you were up in the pits and you saw it from there, he went in back first. Uh, everyone think knows when you win yourself you're not getting up until you've got your breath back so um don't often win yourself in table tennis though so ping pong yeah you're not trying hard enough then <laughs> and then the race could not have been uh awarded at that point although it probably would have been a 5-1 if he'd awarded it, it would have been a 5-1 yeah um i think it was only lap two though wasn't it and let's be honest um charles wasn't out of the race so it, it wouldn't have been fair to award that one uh, if it had been the reverse, though, I think I would have been shouting and screaming for it to be awarded. So, you know, you take some, you lose some. So, Danny King 8 and Daniel Hume, another Heat 15 appearance for the Wow Factor. Daniel Hume got tonight 6 plus 2. Another good night for Daniel. Yeah, there was some good intelligent riding by Daniel tonight. Um, I think uh, earlier in the season you would have seen him throwing that up the fence, trying to get every bit of drive he could get and... Uh, he got in the points positions tonight and um, made the best of him. Moving on to our number three, who had a torrid, torrid evening, Eric Riss. So what I should be saying is Eric Riss nine, because that's what he should have got. Eric Riss three, besieged by mechanical problems. Can you shed any light on them? Uh, ignition things. He thought the first one, so he was winning heat three, was it? Winning heat three, um, cut out. Uh, he, he thought it was the plug cap, um, so he changed that. Uh, winning his next one cut out again. Uh, I believe they changed the whole ignition system after that. Um, it was sorted after that one. Just unfortunately ran a last in his next one. I don't think um, there was any issues. He wasn't particularly off the pace. Him and Jason were just sort of in each other's way to a certain degree, but there was no way past the two at the front. And then he finally got everything together for his last one and he showed what he is capable of at the moment. It's just things haven't been going his way recently. At any point in tonight's match, did you think we could lose this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we never got that far ahead. Um, it's quite frustrating that uh, two weeks in a row we've got the visitors to 
tax up territory and they've managed to pull it back. Um, luckily, we we did stretch that lead again tonight, but uh, they've got some quality riders in their team. Uh, I've been surprised um, by some of their scores this year. I think they're a better team than what they've been showing. Uh, James Pearson had a really good night. I'm not sure Jake would have done that well. Uh, what did he get in the Six. end? Six. That's a good return from James. Um, he was a thorn in our side, really. I, I, I wouldn't have been surprised if he'd scored more than that, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, I think I think they can take a lot from tonight, to be honest, and uh, hopefully push on a bit more as the season goes on. Yeah, because when, uh, when you'll hear from Mark, that we both agree that sixth place is still up for grabs. So, moving on, before we do hear from Mark Phillips, Jason Edwards, he does love 8-14. He's sent to the Jordan Stewart of the Rekka Bears. So, 3, 4, 5, 7 for Jason. That's a good night, one on 4.24. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Um, and again, I thought he deserved more than he, he scored, really. He was in some uh, tough races, and we get used to Jason sitting around the inside line, and he actually got moved up onto the dirt line tonight. Um, and it worked for him. Um, heat 14, he was up on that dirt line all the way. Uh, was he off an outside gate as well? Heat 14? Yeah, yeah, gate 4. So he, Jason has a habit of struggling off the outside gates. So to win one off gate four, was uh, that's really good for Jason and promising for the, the season ahead, really. Uh, right, so now we will interject and we'll, we heard from Plymouth promoter Mark Phillips on the side's 48-41 defeat to the Redcar Agelia Bears. I'm joined by Plymouth promoter Mark Phillips. Mark, ran over about 10 black cats. It could have been yours tonight. Would you go along with that? Yeah, I think up to, uh, up to heat 13, we... Thought we could do the job, and we was geared up for it. Um, Mr. King falling on the defence didn't help. Turn the five-one to us into a into a three-two, so it was um, yeah, disappointing. That's the way Plymouth season's going. To be fair, we we seem to be getting a lot of bad luck, a lot of bad decisions. Um, yeah, one of those things, I suppose. As we've just spoke about off camera, sixth place is still up for grabs. Although people may say six. Six playoff teams in the nine team leagues, not correct. That's the rules. Sixth place still up for grabs, so there's plenty to play for for the Gladiators. Yeah, sure. Um, and we're still going for it. I mean, we've just um, brought in a new reserve. And um, we're still trying. So, yeah, we're still in the market. I'm still not delighted with the team tonight. They all pulled their finger out and, and certainly tried. And it was definitely one of the better experiences on the away matches this year. Um, a tough place to come as well. No, this is Redcar, mate. <laughs> Seriously. No, it's um. You've got a good team, and on paper we've got a good team. We just need them to get them to gel a bit. Uh, but there was, as you said, encouraging signs. Heat thirteen, you couldn't get more unlucky. Danny stuck under the fence. He can't get out under the fence. And then in the rerun, Richie uh, breaks down at the start. Was that a mechanical problem for Richie or? Yeah, his split link went on his back chain, so um, doesn't help. Doesn't help matters at all. Um, but looking at the rest, as you brought in James Pearson, which was a surprise to everybody because we had now a program Jake Turner, your ex rider, but you brought in James Pearson. Um, James has got plenty of experience in this country now. Looking at a kick on now for Birmingham and, uh, and maintain that four point average. Yeah, I mean what. Um, it was disappointing to let Jake go, but Jake was making silly mistakes. Um, so we brought Jason in. Um, I don't know, he's done an excellent job for us tonight. He did ride well against us for Birmingham beginning of the season. I think he scored five or six, maybe. Um, but no, he's got a great attitude. Just on Jake Turner for a second, is it that maybe Plymouth wasn't the right track for the lad? Um... No, I did get him down on some training days. We actually got him going really well. Um, but he preferred to run his bike loose. Um, I don't really know why. And I kept trying to get him to, to shorten it up and make it a bit more grippier. But he still reverts, reverted back to his to his old habits to make it an easier ride. Um, I did say Speedway's not about getting an easy ride. It's about getting a grip on the floor. And, and you've got to learn to, to fight that, work with it to get the points and yeah it didn't go in so sorry and last couple uh 
I'm sure you're impressed recently. Your local lad Ben Trigger is really sad to come on. He's scoring, scoring points, especially at home. And he got four the other night, I think, away at Scunthorpe as well. Yeah, sure. He's been getting some some tuition from Gary Havelock and, um, here at Redcore. So, yeah, he's, he's certainly brought him on heaps and bounds. He's, he's certainly a different rider than what we had a month ago. And that's, in my eyes, I, I don't know if you agree, that's one of the most pleasing things, seeing, because we have it the same with Jake Mumford, seeing someone who's just progressing and see it in front of your very eyes, because we have it with Jake, and hopefully you'll get that with Ben as well. He's a nice lad to boot as well. Yeah, I certainly hope so. I, there, there's going to be a, a decent speedway rider in there. Um, his gating's getting better. Um, he's, he's attacking things more. And hopefully a bit of aggression and he should make a decent rider. Last one, we'll touch on our former guy, Ben Barker. Crazy as ever, but rode very well tonight. That's his kind of speedway track, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, he loves it. He, can lo- he loves it when he gets out in the dirt and um, leg back and flat out. He just loves it. Thank you very much for your time, Mark. No problem, thank you. Back now with Jamie Swells for the concluding part of the Rewind. So, just touching back on Jason for a second, obviously he had some disappointing news that was released today about him being released from the Kingsland Stars. And when I spoke to him earlier, he just says, when you're racing just in one league in this country, you're not getting on the bike enough. So, how can we help? Can we help in any way in terms of that? No, we just support Jason. Um, hopefully, uh, someone else will pick him up. I'm not sure... There's any real positions open in the top league now. Everyone's had a little shuffle around and they all seem to be doing a reasonable job at the moment. Um, I personally think he's you know, best off out of Kingsland at the moment. So there's a lot of uh, unsettlement there and um, I think there's only two riders left from the start of the season now. Not even the team manager's the same. Um, when things are going against you, it's it's not a nice place to be. Um, the track's very hard to ride there at the moment, the way they... Um, uh, have it set up. I, I think I, I used to say the same about him with Mildenau last year. I think it's detrimental to his riding because you almost have to ride defensive up on top of the bike, and then when you get here, where we need him to be relaxing into the bike, uh, he's sort of slipping into the other style sometimes. Um, so personally, I don't think it's a bad thing for him, but we we do want him to get picked up by somebody else fairly soon. It might even need a spell in National League if a, a place comes up in there. I know he doesn't want to do a National League. He's, he's past that now, but time on the bike is time on the bike. It's important, isn't it, bike time? Yes. Um, Especially for a younger rider. It, all I would say is uh, I'm personally not a fan of doubling up. Um, but when everybody else is, then you need to be a keep up. That's, that's the problem. Nobody should be, and then everyone will be all right. Um, but when everyone else is, you need to be. Fair enough. Right, move on to the skipper who threatened me earlier. But we'll pass that one. Yes. Remember that? Uh, yeah, it's just standard. <laughs> so Charles today scored 13 for Charles. And when it's two, is heat 11, he got a second place. And heat 15, he got a second place. That stage, I mean, you weren't passing, were you? No. Um, that I think it was um, Kyle both times, wasn't it? Kyle got sat right on that wall of dirt and... There was no way past it. was just took him for the second place. Um, you know, you'd almost say the track had got dangerous at that point. It was slippy on the inside, too deep on the outside. Um, that's what happens in this weather when when you've got a track with dirt on. Um, so it was, you know, tuck in and do what he can. He, he did put pressure on, but he didn't risk his neck for it, and that's exactly what we needed him to do. Yeah, as you said to me, you don't want to shortchange the fans. The fans pay their hard-earned money to see this. And some, uh, I'm sure some people would call that off after Heat 10. But it's important that the fans who we appreciate massively get the money's worth. Yeah, um, it would have been easy to call it off at 10. Um, it wasn't that bad at that point. Uh, if we were going to call it, it probably would have been at eight five. I think, when it started coming down heavy. we just give it a few minutes, it's all right. Um, I think, you know, when it's genuine, and if it was really lashing down after heat 10, the fans understand things like that. Uh, but... If there isn't a genuine reason for it, and uh, it's just because you want to make your life easier or you know make it better for the score or something like that, the fans see through it. Um, the field short change, you lose people off the gate for the rest of the season. It's uh, it's not the right way to do it. They, they've paid the money in. Let's put the best show on we can. Right, quickly before we move on to our reserves, we'll just go star man for Plymouth. That's what I want from you now, please. Can you give me a star man from the Gladiators? Star man, I mean. 
Barker was pretty good, wasn't he? He did, he did a good night. Um, He's kind of tracking it. Well, he brought here long enough. Uh, I, you know, the Heat leaders did what the Heat leaders should be. Um, it, it was it was Pearson that stood out for me. Uh, Heat two especially, he did a really good pass on calls uh, and then caught up to um, Connor. So, yeah, six points. Was that six plus one? No, just six. Just six. Six from his first match on the on the way track. Um that's a really good return from James, and uh, yeah, yeah, I'd go with him. Seems like a good kid as well. Yeah, I like James. I haven't had much to do with him. I've seen about a couple of tracks. Um, we'll get to see him here next week in the um, Julie Lewis Memorial, so we'll see a bit more of him. Alongside the guy he's just replaced. Absolutely, yeah. and his partner at the bottom there, Trigger, will be here too. <laughs> so, James Pearson, the star from Jamie Fall, the Gladiators. So, our reserves, the two Connors tonight. Connor Bailey on a 4.09. Scored nine, um, yes, nine plus two. He's in some form, that lad, since he went to work. And... Yeah, and uh, he was unlucky in heat 12 as well to have a fall. Um, just got a little bit locked up out in the slimy stuff and come down. I think he would have had a probably a paid uh, second in that one as well. Who was he against? Yeah, he, did look, he did look like he was coming around the outside, and then, as you said, that, that happened. Yeah. But he did look like he was going to join, I think it was Charles. No, it was Eric. Eric's win. Eric. Okay. But the two behind him, I don't think they would have passed him once uh, once he'd got there. So he might have even got a paid win in that one. Uh, he was very close. It was just after a track grade. And he said he went through uh, what he thought was a lump of drive. And two foot after it was just slime. So it come round him and, and went down. So it was unfortunate by him. Um, but the rest of his night, brilliant. And a few weeks ago, if you said he'd had a fall and a paid win, you'd, you'd be, wouldn't be expecting... Uh, nine, would you? I think, to be fair to him, probably the last month he's been going really well. Once uh, he had a slow start to the season, he, he was doing all right. Um, and then, yeah, once he's getting more and more matches in, it's uh, it's all coming good. And moving on to our guest for the evening, Connor Coles, who <laughs> he got two, it feels like more than two, but it was a battling two. Yeah, yeah. It, it, um, it would have been really easy for him to settle for where he was, um, in especially in Heat 2. Was it Heat 2? No. No, Heat 4. Heat 4, yeah. Uh, as I've already mentioned, the pass on Worrell was, was really good and, and a tough one as well. Um, so, what did he get? Just two in the end? Yeah, it feels like Marcus yeah. James Payson passed him in the reserves rest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he pulled his head up high for that two points. Um, he certainly deserved more than that. He was. Um, you wouldn't have thought he was here as a guest anyway. He stuck it on the line tonight. So, you're going to pay him for 10? Oh. <laughs> No comment. <laughs> so, tonight's meeting, 48-41 to the Bears. We take a seven-point aggregate lead back to uh, down to Plymouth for the return match. You're going to go at that one this time? Plymouth one, yeah. It's on tour, isn't it? We've got British final, then Plymouth, then Pool. And uh, I think we're going to go at Kings Lynn the day after because um, Ipswich are there, so we'll get to see a few of our lads as well. I'm in America. Damn shame. <laughs> so, thank you all for joining us. That is the end of tonight's Rick Rewind. Come and join us next week. We have the Julie Lewis Memorial. So we'll see you there. Thank you very much.